hello everyone and welcome back to another video so today i'm going to be introducing my tbr for the Koreathon, which is coming back this year i'm so excited about that because i really wanted to participate in it last year and it wasn't active at the time so i'm so so happy that it came back this year and i have a very very good selection of books for each of the challenges it was so hard narrowing down the books that i wanted to read for certain challenges but hopefully I can get to those books in like the near future. So there are seven challenges for this readathon. Of course, the first challenge is the group book, which is Winter in Sukcho by Elisa Shua Dusapin. This book takes place in Korea on the border of South and North Korea, where this town is. And in that town is where our main character named Marguerite is. And she works at this guest house where she has chose to settle down after like traveling and she's half korean half french and as she's at this guest house a french cartoonist walks in and they end up developing a relationship then that relationship leads to conversations about their experiences and they end up going on trips together and there's a lot of things explored within this piece and i'm so excited to get into it this author has been said to be very amazing when it comes to writing so i have high expectations when it comes to like the writing and how this story is going to be portrayed and what's going to be said overall about the characters and about their world I want all the descriptions. I want it to be so vivid. I can't take it because literally when reading books like this, I definitely envision a lot of things like, you know, when people say they get like the ability to see the story while reading the story. I get that a lot, but I'm hoping for that and more when it comes to this book. So I'm excited to get into it. I think it's a really good selection for the group read. The next challenge is read a book translated from Korean. And the book I have selected for this read is No One Writes Back by Eun Ji Jung and Jung Yo Won, which I'm going to listen to on Scrib. And I'm so excited to get into this one. No One Writes Back is the story of a young man who leaves home, only his blind dog, an MP3 player, and a book and he travels for like three years from motel to motel meeting people on the road. As he meets these people, he documents their names, he takes their addresses and he writes to them. And some of these people don't write back, but he wants to let them know that they are loved and that they are important in this world because most of the people that he meets are very depressed or um, suicidal or just going through heartbreak and death and all those things. And he writes to them to make sure that they know that they're still in this world, somebody's looking out for them. Literally, most of them don't write back, but he keeps writing to them until somebody eventually does because he wants to know if they're okay. So this book basically follows him until somebody writes back and lets him know that they have received all of his messages, they appreciate his kindness and they are okay. So that sounds really like, it sounds very interesting because I don't know, but not a lot of people have somebody in this world who is going to always look out for them. So to have this like main character that wants to be like the full on empath and he's able to take all the punches and then give them a piece of himself along the way, continuously, even in letters, just seems refreshing it seems new it seems very interesting and i would like to see how his journey goes i would like to see how he writes to them what these letters entail who are these people and that's another thing we don't even know their names he numbers them only he knows their names and us as the readers we only know their numbers that he gave them i cannot wait to see who these people are description wise and why he writes to them what he writes to them and if one of them will eventually write back okay the third challenge is to read a historical fiction novel and the suggested selections that were given by the readathon um, leaders was very good but i found this one book that really just struck me and i was just like i have to read it i have to know what it's about and this i'm also listening to on script and this book is this burns my heart by samuel park 
and this book takes place in the 1960s where an unhappily married woman struggles to give her daughter a good life and to find love in a society caught between ancient traditions and change. Our main character Suja Choi attempts to find happiness in a land where wives have no rights and mothers own nothing, where love remains elusive and the only way to survive is to live the lessons of Confucian tradition, perseverance, strength, loyalty, and grace. Charting her way through an ill-advised marriage, Suja must navigate the intrigue and dangers of living with her conniving in-laws, all the while longing for her true love of the past, the elusive Dr. Yule. And when he enters her life again, Suja is confronted with a final chance at happiness. This Burns My Heart evokes a strong sense of place and era, reminiscent of Sarah Waters and the richly drawn characters of the exploration of women changing roles. So I don't know if you guys remember, but last year I was going to read a book by Sarah Waters. And that was a sapphic romance taking place in the 1970s, um, I think, or was it 1960s? Maybe it was between the 60s and the 70s. I still haven't read it and I would love to get to it, but that will come in due time. So for this book to be compared to the works of that author, I am very excited to see where this author is going to go because I was so, so, so excited to read that book. And the synopsis for that book by that author sounded amazing and so many people have hyped it up and said that it is amazing a couple of people that i respect like opinion wise on booktube have given it like the utmost praise so if this book is being compared to the work of that author sarah waters i would like to see what samuel park is going to do with this period piece so i'm so excited to get into it and moving on to the next challenge so the fourth challenge is to read an award-winning korean novel and the novel that i have chosen is untold night and day by bae swa and i am so excited to read this because um i believe it has a little bit of sci-fi elements in it and as i've told you guys i love sci-fi but i don't know if sci-fi books are my thing and this one takes place in south korea of course and it follows a 28 year old named ayami who is traveling around south korea between night and day but her story starts in the the streets of korea where she is with her boss and as she's walking things start to shift and, and she ends up in this fever dream like state where she's like trapped she becomes the the navigator for this twisted other world that she's in um within korea and we follow her like i guess you could say psychedelic trip um throughout the whole story and we see her navigate like this very like fever dreamish world and it sounds like a very interesting piece and i'm excited to see like Beiswa's warped version of reality i'm excited to see whatever this author has to offer because it sounds so amazing so the fifth challenge is to read a manhwa or graphic novel or webtoon i decided to go with a webtoon since i already have the app and i already have like a good selection of webtoons that i've already been reading and so i was just like since i already know how the webtoon app works i can probably find something to read so i ended up going with a whole new webtoon to read and i made sure to find a short one that i can read within the time of the readathon the name of the webtoon is Anna Rasumanara, and this is by Il Kwan Ha. And basically, the webtoon is about a girl named Yoon Ai who dreamed of being a magician, but in reality, she's just a high school student who can't even afford new socks. LOL. After meeting a mysterious magician at a carnival, she decides to follow her dream. And I thought it sounded similar to uh, the Night Circus, but a whole different like storyline, different characters, and obviously a different take. I was just in love with the idea of a high school girl who wants to become a magician and she decides to take on this new role once she sees somebody who is fully there already so i'm guessing she's going to be following in this person's footsteps and asking for help and it will be nice to see how their relationship grows and how she figures everything out and how her mentor is going to be 
either an amazing or a bad mentor i hope there's like some funny elements in it because usually a lot of webtoons do have funny elements which is always the greatest part the humor in the characters really makes them lovable so i'm excited to see what this webtoon artist has to offer okay this one i'm very excited for because it took me so long to um, narrow down like the book for this one because i listen to and watch so many korean celebrities that i was just like how do i choose which one i want to take a suggestion from but i eventually narrowed it down it was between kai from xo rm and suga from bts um irene and joy from red velvet and there was one more person i can't remember right now but it was a very long list but i ended up going with jisoo from blackpink which is my bias per anyway so i went with her suggestion of reading carol by patricia highsmith which is a sapphic romance story taking place between two women in the 1950s 1952 to be exact this is a novel of a love that society forbids of course because it's sapphic and it has become a cult classic this is a story a true story that is plucked from highsmith's own life Carol tells the riveting drama of Terrace Velvet, a stage designer trapped in a department store day job, whose routine is forever shattered by a gorgeous epiphany, the appearance of Carol Ard, a customer who comes in to buy her daughter a Christmas toy. Therese begins to gravitate towards the alluring suburban housewife who's trapped in a marriage as stullifying as Therese's job. They fall in love and set out across the United States ensnared by society's confines and the imminent disapproval of others yet propelled by their infatuation so that just sounds like really good and jisoo gave it like the utmost praise and she has recommended it many times so i'm excited to see what the hype is about okay so the final challenge is to read a book featuring a korean dysphoria character i decided to go with one of the selections that was given and that is crying in h march by michelle zanier or Zoner, I believe. And I've been eyeing this book for a while. So this is a memoir about our author, Michelle Zoner, or Zoner, um, based on her life as a Korean American and growing up in Eugene, Oregon. So we start the journey watching her grow up and learn all about her culture and all about American culture and like those two meshing and learning traditional things from her mother while experiencing other things at school. And then as we sift through the story, we start to see her go into college. And as she goes into college, she starts to lose a little bit of the traditional and the things that her mother taught her. But towards the end of the story, we start to see her gain that knowledge back and allow her roots to fully encompass her. And we see her fully accept who she is as a Korean American and mesh those two cultures together and figure out who she is as a person. Okay, those are the challenges and those are the books that I have selected. I'm so excited to get into these books next month. Um, I can't believe it's just a week, but honestly, that week is going to be an experience because all of these books are amazing. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. If you have made it this far, put this emoji in the comment section. I have all my social medias down below. I have my Amazon wish list down below. Again, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!